Hi, everybody. This is for Cherry Creek High School, CP Algebra 1, second semester, Chapter 8. This is worksheet number 13. Uh, we are going to graph the new transformation. So we're given a graph on this one. So this is going to shift right 5 and up 2. So I'm going to take my vertex. I'm going to go right 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up 2. Looks like when I pattern graphed, it's still right and left, and I'm going down 1. So that's the first one. This negative out front is going to flip the whole thing over, and then we're going to move it up three. So this is that positive five, so it comes down to negative five down here, and then I go up three. So I get to right here, and it flipped it over because I had the negative out in front. This one is going to flip it over the y axis, and it's going to move it down four. So this is that negative two, it comes here, and I'm going to go down one, two, three, four. And then it's going to open downward because the original opened downward. Number three looks like an absolute value equation, but all the shifting is the same. So we're going to look at the vertex. So this is going to shift left four, one, two, three, four, and up three. And then. These are straight because it's absolute value. This one is going to flip it over the y-axis to here and then go up five. And then this one's gonna flip it over the uh, x-axis because of the negative out front. And then I'm going to go right two and up one. So this one actually opens upside down because of that negative out front. Number four is kind of a goofy looking graph. I can't tell you what kind of function it is, but there's things that we can do. So we're looking at the peaks of everything. This one's gonna shift up two, so I go up two here, I go up two here, I go up two here. This comes up two, um, and this one here comes up two. So my letter A looks like this, if I can draw it appropriately. This one will flip the whole thing over the x-axis. So this one comes to here, great. This comes to here, great. This one stays right there, and this one is gonna come to negative four. So it made the whole thing open backwards. And that should come up a little bit, but you get the basic idea. Uh, this is gonna shift our black one uh, to the right two, or excuse me, to the left two, and down three. So I'm gonna go, from here, I'm going to go left two and down three, left two, down three, left two, down three, left two, or we're right here now, left two, down three, is that right? Oh, I forgot that one. Left two, down, oh shoot, I was doing this one incorrect. I'm going off the black. Go off the black. I apologize. So, so left, two, down, three. It might be better if your teacher works it in class. And then this one flips over the x-axis. Okay, again, it's getting a little too congested on the board, but ask your teacher, and I'm sure they will work that out for you. All right, describe the transformation on number five. Let's see which is the original. This one's our original one. So it flipped upside down, so I have a negative out front, F at, and then it didn't shift right or left, so it's just F at X, and then it also moved down three. So that's our transformation on number five. So it flipped it over the X axis and it moved the whole thing down three. Number seven, we want to find the vertex, y-intercept and x-intercepts. All right, so let's find our vertex first. We can use our negative b over 2a. And in this one, we see that we have a b value of negative 12. So I have negative and negative 12 times 2 times our, I have three negative signs. So the whole thing's going to be negative. 12 over 4 is 3. So this is finding my vertex. Take negative 3, plug it in. So I get negative 2 times 9 because negative 3 squared is 9. 
uh, plus 36 because negative 12 times negative 3 plus 7. So that looks like negative 18 plus 36 is 18. 18 plus 7 is 25. So I have a vertex there. Uh, in order to find the y-intercept, y-intercept, we're going to plug 0 in for our x values. So we just get 0, 7 because that's 0 on that 0. And I would ask your teacher to do the quadratic formula on this one. I don't think it might factor, but I would ask them to factor it because we have that negative out front. And the factoring will tell you where to find the x-axis crossings, which are called the roots. Number nine, we have the vertex, which is HK, and we have another point, XY. So I'm going to use Y equals A, X minus H quantity squared plus K. We're going to plug in all of our values. We don't know what our uh, A value is, but my Y value is 3, my X value is 2, my H value is 1, quantity squared, and my K value is 7. So I get 3 equals, that's 1 squared, so that's just A, and then plus 7. Subtract the 7, so I find that A is equal to negative 4. Now we're ready to plug in. I'm going to plug just my A value and my H and my K value. And that's all done. That's number 9. Number 11, this would be great for your teacher to work on in class because you're using the calculator. I don't have the calculator up on this computer right now, so I would ask in class, ask in your class for them to work that out. And that should be it for that page.